Hi, this is Kendrick at worldmedicalschool.org. We're going to talk a little bit about general anxiety disorder. So this is uh, classically depicted as people who just worry about everything. And uh, it doesn't have to be that they have any significant uh, life events that that cause the worry. But a lot of these people also have kind of significant social stressors as well that contribute to it. One of the big things that um, is seen on the presentation that's not necessarily in the diagnostic criteria is all these physical symptoms. Um, Fatigue, fidgeting, headaches, nausea, uh, numbness in hands and feet, which is kind of a a strange one that, you know, people are thinking uh, all kinds of other diseases when they get this. Muscle tension, um, aches, difficulty swallowing, difficulty breathing, trembling. And the reason that I think these are kind of important is because they look like they could be a lot of other systemic diseases. And so these symptoms kind of, uh, kind of snowball um, and make, uh, make the patient even more worried because they think they have something bigger going on. Uh, often these patients will have comorbid depression, PTSD, and OCD. I think the numbers on depression were somewhere around 17% of depressed patients who are going to have anxiety. Uh, some, somewhere closer to 50% were going to have some kind of an anxiety disorder, but around 17% were going to have a generalized anxiety disorder. The criteria are um, A, excessive anxiety and worry more often than not for at least six months. And it has to be about multiple events um, instead of just one thing because that was going to be more like a social phobia or a specific phobia. So generalized anxiety disorder has to be about a bunch of things. Otherwise, it's probably a, more of a specific phobia. It has to be difficult to control. Um, and you have to have three out of the six following symptoms. Fatigue, irritability, uh, edginess or restlessness. Uh, sleep disturbance, uh, muscle tension, and um, difficulty concentrating. Um, I tried to think of a a good mnemonic for this, um, and uh, I came up with fiesta, uh, fatigue, irritability, fatigue, uh, irritable, edgy, sleepy, tense, um, and attention problems. So uh, fiesta, remember that. kind of can help you to remember these symptoms. It may not be as important as your uh, ECAPS symptoms um, because the you know these are all pretty pretty uh, closely related with anxiety. You can imagine if somebody's going to be anxious they're also going to be irritable, edgy, um, and have difficulty concentrating but it's still helpful to remember that you have to have three out of these Um, more days than not for at least six months to call it generalized anxiety disorder. And you have to remember that it's not due to an axis one disorder. Uh, A lot of schizophrenics can be very anxious or paranoid. Uh, Same with um, bipolar and some of the others. Um, So uh, make sure that that you rule out an axis one diagnosis first. And um, and it has to has to have impairment, so you know we're causing serious problems in uh, relationships or occupation, and it can't be due to drugs, or it can't just happen during another disorder. So D and F, I didn't quite understand how they uh, are different uh, because they both say they can't be due to a different disorder, but I think what it's saying here is that. Uh, for example, if you are having, um, if you have bipolar, um, and you're only anxious during a manic episode, then that's not going to be generalized anxiety disorder. But you can have generalized anxiety disorder and bipolar if, for example, you have anxiety uh, more days than not outside of the uh, time periods where you're having. A, a mood disorder or a mood episode. So those are, uh, you know, small distinction, but but it's uh, helpful to to realize 
because you're going to be treating these a little bit differently. So the treatment, um, the first thing you want to take a look at is is uh, what's what may be causing the anxiety or what may be contributing to the anxiety. I mentioned earlier that uh, a lot of these people do have significant social stressors. And so you want to try and minimize the things that are causing the stress in their life. Uh, minimize the things that uh, that cause them worry. And uh, psychotherapy plays into that as well. Most of these people are going to respond uh, to medication, SSRIs, venlafaxine, buspirone, uh, benzodiazepines. So SSRIs are first line. Uh, venlafaxine is also considered to be first line. Buspirone, uh, remember, is, uh, is in a kind of a class of its own, and it's more of a it's more of a long-term anxiety medicine, uh, and it's usually used when people don't respond to SSRIs. Then we come to benzos. Benzos are kind of your classic anxiety medicine, um, and they have a, a history of being overused, and, and now people say uh, they've been underused, and, and now it, other people say that they're being overused again. Um, I wrote here immediate relief only, and that's not quite what up to date says. Uh, it's kind of, kind of how I feel about it, which doesn't mean anything. But, uh, but the f the fact is that people get really addicted to this stuff, and and so they can be prescribed on a chronic basis. But the the main use of benzos in anxiety, generalized anxiety disorder, is just to just to help the symptoms while your SSRIs are kicking in. So if somebody comes in and you give them a diagnosis of GAD, you give them the SRIs and you also give them the benzos just for the short term uh, to wait for the SSRIs to, to start working for them. Make sure to taper the dose um, so they don't go into withdrawal. But remember that uh, benzodiazepines can actually cause anxiety on a chronic basis. So, uh, so in my opinion, I'm probably not going to be using them very much uh, in in the long term. But but they can be used that way. I just would be really cautious with it. This month, uh, I'm seeing a lot of patients uh, coming in who are addicted to to benzos, and they uh, they don't necessarily um they're not they're not using them certainly as as recommended they're using them on a chronic basis over years and years and um it doesn't seem like it's a very good thing for them and then patient education is important especially if they're taking benzodiazepines make sure they understand uh how they should be used but also just uh, educating the patient about the disease so they don't get anxious about the disease because uh, that anxiety kind of begets anxiety. Remember on your differential that this is a really short list of the things that you could have on the differential because uh, a lot of things can look like anxiety. The psychiatric diagnoses that look a lot like anxiety are going to be panic disorder, PTSD, OCD, depression, we're going to talk about uh, OCD on the next one. We've already talked about depression, so you should be able to kind of uh, fish those out. But panic disorder, remember, is is about panic attacks. Um, and panic attacks are, are different than just a generalized anxiety. Usually panic attacks are, are uh, more acute um, and usually a little bit more severe in the way that they present. So uh, look for look for a video on panic disorder as well. Adrenal crisis, uh, atrial fibrillation, delirium tremens, uh, cannabis use, as well as there's a lot of there's a lot of drugs that can do this. So make sure you're doing a tox screen if you suspect it. And hypercalcemia all can give you a, a, a anxiety disorder like uh, presentation. A note on delirium tremens, uh, you can get a pretty similar presentation from, from benzo withdrawal, um, so, so look, look for that, or if they're coming off alcohol, it'll look a lot, a lot like 
uh, anxiety. And uh, the hypercalcemia could be caused by a lot of things, but look for like hyperparathyroidism. Uh, just make sure you're running a, a, a few of these uh, tests, at least like a, a complete metabolic panel or something on these people. If you want to help these uh, videos get better or, or help out the cause, you can email me at volunteer at worldmedicalschool.org. There's lots of stuff that you can do to help. The big thing, though, is just if you can make comments below, then we can uh, figure out how to make these videos better. And I should be able to help more people that way. So thanks for your comments and for your help, and uh, we'll talk to you again soon.